called options, we type directory dir string. Inside the string directory, the command we need is called the find command. The way find command works is you give it a string and it looks for a pattern. The pattern we're looking for is GIF. If it finds .gif, you'll tell us where inside the string did it find it. If it didn't find this .gif, then it will tell you that it got a negative one. Let me show you how this works. First, let's import the string library. Now, if I declare a name as Lindsay and name2 as che.gif. Now, if I try to determine if dot gif exists in name, I will type this command. Find name gif dot gif. See, name is the string, in this case Lindsay, and dot gif is what we're looking for. Notice, notice how it returned a negative one. This means that dot gif doesn't exist in the string. However, if I try to do the same thing with name two, it will return the value five. So find name two dot gif. The reason why it returned the value five is because they have five characters before dot gif. Just count it. C H I E H. That's five characters. And then dot gif. It basically tells you where did find command find dot gif. We will use the same method to find out if a file is a picture or a program. Simple enough. From the last class, we learned that we can get the name of all the files inside a folder. Now, now that we have the name, we can check if they are pictures. Besides checking for this kind of function, there are several other options I should teach you while we are on this topic. You can change the word to uppercase by typing name equals upper name. Now if I if I print out name, it would change Lindsay to all uppercase. Of course you can do the opposite and make it lowercase. So if you want to say name equals the lower name, this command will change Lindsay back into all lowercase. You can also strip a specific string. For example, I might not want dot gif to show up. I might just want to have che show up instead of che dot gif. So if I want to get rid of dot gif at the end, I can use this command. Strip name2. Remember name2 is che dot gif. And what we want to strip, which is dot gif. Notice how dot gif is gone from che dot gif. This is how you get rid of unwanted strings. This one time, I had to take my last name off a whole bunch of documents. I was very glad that I knew how to strip away my last name, or else I had to type it over again. So this is a very useful command. Also, you can also convert a number into a string by using the str command. For example, if I have number equals to 5, and I want this to be represented as a string, I will type the command str num equals to num. And the number now is in a string format. Like I have explained in the previous classes, it's easier to print string format, while it's easier to do math on numbers. Depending on your application, you want to change the format. To change a string back to an integer or a number, what you have to do is type int int and then put the num, the number we just converted into a string, in the parentheses. And you'll get the number back. Or you can change it to a float by typing float num. Either way will work. This command turns string back to a number. All these functions are extremely useful for our future applications. You just might need them someday. Once, my boss gave me like 4,000 files and told me to convert all the names into uppercase. If I had to do them one by one, I would have been in big trouble. Instead, I pull out my 
little Python program and used the upper command and I did it in five minutes. It was beautiful. I also slept for the rest of the day, so it was great. So maybe we'll do a project just like that, just for the heck of it, after this one. We'll pretend that your boss just told you to do, do something ridiculous and boring on the computer over and over again. So instead of complaining, we'll do it in five minutes and sleep for the rest of the day. Anyway. <laughs>